Hey you guys, Faith here. Thank you for stopping into Faith St. Jules. I really appreciate you taking the time to stop in and watch this video today. It is Monday, which means it is Motivation Monday. And today we're going to be talking about bending. No, not the bending way you manipulate your body in the form positions in which you desire. Like, okay, I'm not the best at bending. <laughs> but you get the point. Um, no, we're talking about bending. Bending as in the manipulation of the mind, whether it be someone manipulating your mind or you manipulating someone's mind in order to get them to do things that better benefit you um, or you doing things that better benefit someone else. Imagine being in a relationship where, for instance, your significant other or your spouse says, um, you know what? I really want to go back to school to um, get my business degree so that I can open up my own business. Um, and you say, oh, really great. Me too. You know, I really want to open my own gallery and I want to go back to school to get my degree in art. And they say to you, I know, I know. I'm so proud of you. And I know you're going to do great. But, you know, the workload in school is so heavy that, you know, one of us is going to have to take on the heavier load of working so that we can just focus on school, you know. Um, so you go, oh, okay, um, it's okay, all right, well, I I'll keep working, and you finish school first, and then after you finish school, I'll go back, and then I will go ahead, and, and so I can see my dream come true. Years go down the road, um, they've gotten their degree, they open up their business, and you say, hey, honey, I'm so happy, I'm so excited that you opened up that business, now I can finally go ahead and start working on my plans to own my own gallery. They say, Oh, oh, so that's a great idea, honey. But now that we have the business, there's so much work to do and I need you to help me in the business so that it can thrive. But you know what? As soon as that business opens, guess what? I'm going to put you through school and I'm going to open up that gallery for you. Then the kids come or something else happened in your life that causes you to have to put it off even more. Next, you know, the business thriving, you watching the person who you made so many sacrifices for succeed. And rather than be happy, you're angry. You resent them because you see them living their dream while you still haven't even realized yours. That is the downside of bending too much. When you start off just wanting to be supportive of your significant other, and so you push your dreams aside so they can realize theirs. And then next thing you know, they get so caught up in their own dream that they manipulate your mind in a way where you feel almost responsible for making sure they see their dream come true. And you guys, that is unhealthy bending that will cause a relationship to fall apart and break because one day when you've had enough, you're going to break and you're going to say, I'm done. I'm done bending. It seems like it will never be my turn to see my dreams come true. And then you're going to have to decide in that moment, me or them. Imagine if you made that decision earlier on and you guys decide instead Hey, let's compromise. Let's find a way where we can both see our dreams come true. And that, you guys, is healthy bending. When you both bend a little bit to help each other realize your dream. We made a promise to one another that we would never get lost in each other. And I broke that promise and you let me. You have let me bend to your every need time and time again. Oh, we have kids? I have to step back from my job. You quit your job? I work overtime. You have a dream of buying your father's building. It becomes my dream too. You run for city councilman? I stand by your side. You win city councilman. Now what? I'm supposed to give up what I love to become a politician's wife? How many days am I supposed to go to, Randall? And how long? And what if city council isn't enough? What then? That's not what no, I want. No, I finally have something. I have something that I have been looking for longer than I knew, and I am not going to give that up. 
I am not going to bend. And that's the problem. Our lives don't work unless I'm doing the bending. Whew, that clip gets me every time, you guys, because it is so real to life. I mean, the things you give up for the ones you love, right? Um, Beth has given up, given up so much so that Randall could continue to live his dream. Um, I don't know if you watch the show, but I'll give you a little um, playback. You know, at one point, Randall quit his job because he realized his dream of going into politics. And Beth had to take on extra hours at her job, work overtime so that she can take care of the bills so that he can realize his dream. Then when he realized a part of that dream, he said, you know what? I want to do this instead. And again, okay, Randall, if this is what you want, that's what we'll do. And then he's got a new dream. Okay, Randall, and doing all of this, Randall didn't stop and say, Beth, what is your dream? How can I help you realize yours? Because you keep sacrificing to help me realize mine. People will only do what you allow them to do, you guys. For so long, Randall, maybe innocently so, made his dream best dream. He didn't even stop to think that maybe there's something she wanted to do because he was so busy thinking about what he wanted to do. And along the way, Beth failed to remember that her goals, her dreams are just as important as Randall. And now, after all this time has passed, now she's at her breaking point. And she's like, no, I'm done. That's it. And now may come the end of a long relationship. And what could have possibly helped it? If first, Beth had not violate her own core values. And by that, what I mean is that she went against something that she truly and deeply wanted in or believed in in order to bring harmony to her relationship. She wanted so badly to make sure her marriage worked that she put aside her dreams. She wanted to keep a peaceful situation in her relationship, so she pushed her wants aside so that he can have his. But honestly, was there really peace? No, there's no peace internally in her. There's no peace in here because while he's realizing his dream, she's, her, the resentment is building up, the anger, the frustration. And if you not watch a show, um, they argue, they start arguing all the time because that anger, frustration is building up and it just whoosh to the surface. And now she's tired. But honestly, whose fault is it? Is it Randall or is it hers? Both. He didn't stop to ask her her dreams. He didn't stop to make sure that she was taking care of, that she was happy in a relationship. And she didn't make it a point to let him know, hey, Randall, that's it. I love you, but that is it. She needed to make sure that she gave him her non-negotiables. What do I mean by that? Your non-negotiables are things that you're not willing to compromise, things that you're not willing to do. For example, Beth wants to own her own dance studio. She loves to dance. Randall, I will support you in your political goals. But after this long, it stopped. Once you become councilman, which is what you want so bad, it stops. And then I will become a ballet instructor. Then I will see my dreams on my own ballet studio because that is my non-negotiable, Randall. I am important. My dreams are just as important as your dreams. And since I have made your dreams important for this long, now it's your turn to make mine important too. Now, will that mean that you'll have this happy ending and they go, woo? Okay, honey, go see your dream, girl. I'm going to hold it down. No, it may end up being where you realize at that point that you're with someone that don't care about your dreams or your goals or what you want to do in life. And sometimes relationships fall apart at this point. Because now anger 
is there, ultimatums are thrown out, threats are thrown out. And you're broken. I always say communication is so important. Have that conversation earlier on in your relationship. I know as we grow, dreams change. I will tell you, my dreams change. I, I wanted to become an officer in the military. And, you know, my husband had already gotten his degree and was working a full-time job. And so what we decided was, okay, um, in order for me to become an officer in the military, I needed to um, finish my degree, get my bachelor's degree. And so while he was at work during the day, I took my classes online because we have kids. You know, I couldn't leave them alone. I had no family to help me take care of them or, or watch them while I was at work. And daycare is extremely expensive. So... During the day, I took my classes online, and when he came home at night, he stayed with the kids, and I went on campus to take my cla my other classes on, on that I couldn't take online. I took it on campus, and in about a year and a half, I graduated my bachelor's degree. By that point, I was fully into motherhood. I didn't want to become an officer because at that point, I knew what it meant. i will be deployed quite often, and I didn't want to be without my children. So instead, my dreams changed. I decided to get a job at a university and work there because my dreams changed from being an officer to just being a mom. I love being a mom. That's my that became my new dream. But the thing is, from the beginning, I let my husband know what I want to do. And my dreams have changed. He will tell you my dreams have changed quite a bit. But at least I let him know what my dreams are. I let him know what my non-negotiables are. And along the way, he knew that if there was a dream he wanted, that I would work with him to make sure those dreams came true. No, we're not perfect. No, not at all. Uh, you know, we have our ups and downs, but I learned earlier on by seeing failed relationships around me, what I wanted for myself when it came to a relationship and what I did not want. And we had that conversation earlier on. And so he knew what my non-negotiables were, and I knew what his non-negotiables are, what he's willing to do, what he's willing to not do. And we came to a compromise, and we worked together. And ultimately, that is equal bending. When you bend a little bit, they bend a little bit, so that you can both realize your dreams or your passion, whatever it may be. But if you're bending 85% of the time and they're only bending maybe 15 or less, who's really bending here? So the first thing that we need to remember, you guys, is that our dreams are just as important as anyone else's. And your dream needs to be realized or you'll live in resentment of your partner. And that is not what you want. And at times when you do give your non-negotiables, that can sometimes mean the ending of a relationship. But honestly, if you're with someone who wants you to sacrifice for their dream, but they don't want to sacrifice for yours, is that really someone you want to be with you guys? I think not. But in the midst of that conversation and, and pushing each other's dreams, that's when you will realize who you're really with. And that's when you're gonna have to decide if that is who you need to be with because your dreams matter too. Thank you guys for joining me today. I hope that what I said entered here, touches here and you put into action. And I hope that what I said was helpful to someone who's listening today. Please comment below and let me know what you think. Um, you know, and if you'd like, also give me some topics, you know, comment below and let me know some topics that you'd like me to touch on or talk about in my upcoming um, Monday talks. Um, and also make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you will always be up and know when I have new videos, hit that alert button as well. All right. Thank you guys so much. You guys have a wonderful and blessed day. See you next Monday. Bye.